And let me give you the second lesson today. Number two, you've got to figure out how to get past your past. You've got to get past your past. Some of you might be thinking, well, Pastor Bob, you know that whole hero's journey thing where God has something special for us. Well, you know, maybe that was true, you know, back before, you know, I, I, I blew it back before I messed up. And, and I'm pretty sure I've disqualified myself now. Uh, you know, God's plan, it probably was before then. It was probably, wow! But now, you know, that I've messed up, it's kind of like, okay, you know, whatever. And part of the weird twist in this story was that a part of Tommy's past had to be dealt with before he could climb this mountain. And interestingly, he had to deal with these things. Something happened in Afghanistan that bothered him. Let's watch this clip today. Our past, right? You can't climb a mountain if you have images of people in your mind falling off the mountain. And Tommy didn't need to focus on feeling guilty if he was going to climb a mountain, and neither do you if you're going to go forward in your journey. And actually, what's interesting is that this sports documentary goes about as deep as you can go because it brings up this fundamental human existential need that every person has that we need to justify ourselves. Humans have this. You have it. I have it. We all have this. That's why we do certain things. We're so quick to do certain characteristics. Why do we compare each other to each other? Why are we always trying to impress one another? And why, why do we try to improve ourselves? And why is it so hard for us to admit that we really messed up? And it's hard to admit that, especially when it's real. I'll tell you the reason. Because somehow we need to feel like we're okay. We don't need to feel like we are condemned, right? And sometimes this, you know, translates into those 3 o'clock in the morning times, you know? When you can't sleep. And, and I know that nobody ever wakes up at 3 o'clock in the morning and is thinking, Oh man, my life's just going wonderful. Yay! Yippee! I'm just so happy. No, no. At 3 o'clock in the morning, man, it's dark. It's difficult. You're thinking negative things. It's hard. And actually the truth is that there are a lot of people in our world that live with this feeling like we're just floating in, in condemnation. And, and that's the, why people are so quick sometimes to condemn each other and judge each other because it's the very water that we're swimming in and the truth is that we need to have a way to get out of this and this is interesting and human right and uh, as we think about what Tommy did to save his fellow soldiers I'm sure that you know immediately his friends said hey you know you, you saved our lives I'm sure his dad said hey you did the right thing it was him or you but sometimes those words can't get down into that part of us that bothers us but how many of you know that there's one by the name of Jesus come on there's one by the name of Jesus who knows how to penetrate the broken heart there's one by the name of Jesus who knows, who knows how to heal and there's one one by the name of Jesus who paid the ultimate sacrifice and he's the one who can bring us our justification. Come on. Why? Because he already paid the penalty. Come on. Can somebody give Jesus a big hand of praise today? And that's what the, that's one of the major things that the Bible is about. It's about being justified. It's about that feeling of being set free from the burden of the past. I just wonder today, is there anybody in the house that would just give away and say, I'm so grateful that God has set me free from my past. Come on. He's forgiven me of the things I've done. I'm no longer bound by those things. I no longer feel guilty about those things. I no longer feel condemned by those things. But I've been justified by His blood. Come on. What a wonderful God we have. Now, I'm sure of this one thing, that God has good plans for you. Tell your neighbor, God has good plans for you. He's got wonderful plans for you. Amen. And the enemy wants to come along, and he wants to stomp all over those plans. He wants to ruin them. He wants to destroy them and tell you you'll never get past your past. But you got to tell the enemy this. That's a lie. My penalty was paid by Jesus Christ on the cross, and because of his blood, I 
I am justified. We know what you say. Well, that's a big old Bible word. I don't know what it means. Let me explain it to you. It means that you've been made just as if I'd never sinned. Come on. Isn't that a glorious thing? So hold your head high. Amen. Amen. Walk free. Let the burden go. Come on. What a wonderful thing. Romans chapter 5 brings this out. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you confess your sins to Him, He forgives you and He wipes the slate clean and He justifies you. And let me tell you, that's why if, we're, if you know Christ, you can move forward on your journey with hope. Come on. You can climb the mountain that's in front of you with hope. You want to know why? Because you are standing in the grace of God. Do I have anybody in the house that's standing in the grace of God? Amen. You're rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. And then number three, the third lesson, and you probably knew this one was coming. Endurance, persis, persistence, and perseverance is needed if you're going to climb the mountain. If you're going to go through the journey of your life, you're going to have to have moments when you don't get discouraged. Now, how many of you realize that every movie needs a bad guy? <laughs> every movie needs a bad guy. If, if there's a bad guy to this movie, it's called Pitch 15. It's the part of the climb that is the most difficult. And Tommy makes it through Pitch 15, but his partner Kevin has a difficult time. Let's, let's watch this. But the obvious lesson for us in our lives is that we have to choose to endure. We have to choose to persist and to persevere. And the truth is that sometimes it's kind of hard to stay encouraged, right? Is there anybody who's ever felt discouraged about the progress that you had in your life? And let me ask you this question today. What is your 15? What's the thing that gets you discouraged where, where is it that you fall? Where is it that you fail? What is it that sometimes knocks you down? Because you know what Kevin is ultimately going to decide, or you know we think he is, he's going to tell Tommy, he's going to say, look man, I, I just can't do this. I'm going to be that guy who spent six years on this, and I got this far, and you know that's as far as I could go. You, go. you go ahead. You go to the top. You go all the way. I'll be here. I'll cheer you on, but I just can't. And how many of you realize that there's a battle there, a struggle there? Will he persevere? And the truth of, us, of it is that all of us have a pitch 15. We all have some things in our life that we need to overcome. We all have things that we struggle with. We all have things that we could call tests of our faith. It might be loneliness or a marriage or finances or health issues or job situations. Uh, but we struggle because it's a test of our faith. Well, what happens when we put God in the mix? Let's read that. James chapter 1 and verse 3 and 4. It says this. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Everybody say endurance. And endurance have, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And this verse, it's in your outline. If you're, gonna, if you're the type of person that circles something, you need to circle the word result because you see endurance has a result that God is going for. That result is that you become whole. It doesn't mean that you become perfect without fault. Uh, you know that, but, but it does mean that you become mature, that you become complete, you become a whole person. And so here's the key. We know that when we're in a season where we have to exercise endurance, that there's something else going on. God is actually taking our setbacks. He's taking our frustrations. He's taking our disappointments. And he's doing something down on the inside of us. Come on, somebody give him a hand of praise today. 
Amen. You see, we have this project. We have this goal. We have this thing that we want to conquer. But you see, God has another project, and his project is us. Come on. He's building us on the inside. So what I'm saying is, as you go down across your pitch 15, and you're struggling with that, in the process, God is saying this. He's saying, listen, I'm going to make you more into my image by this. So every time you slip off the rock, every time you keep battling, same thing. Every time your relationships struggle or God, you got to remember one thing, my friend, that God is doing something. Come on, somebody. All our prayers seem to be about the completing the pitch. But what God says is, look, I'm more interested in completing you on the inside. And this is where this movie goes to the absolute next level. Tommy's gone on, all right? He's three days from the top. He's way up above Kevin. And so it looks like Tommy's going to finish. And Kevin's just going to be the guy that wasn't able to make it across. And there's this point in the movie where the movie takes a whole awesome turn. Watch this. That was an awesome moment in Tommy's life, right? And it leads us to the obvious last point. Let's finish together. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of verses in our Bible talk about our faith and our journey and our race that we're running, our climb, a lot of different analogies that we could look at. And probably one of those most famous verses is Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number one. Most of you can quote it by heart. It says this, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us run with endurance the race that's set before us. And as we read that verse in our American culture, in our American mind, what we see is ourselves. Right? And we're in this long race, and there's the finish line, and we come alone across the finish line, and we throw up our hands, and people are cheering, and they're high-fiving, and everybody's excited because we made it across the goal, and, and we do that all by ourselves. But I wonder, is that really what the author of Hebrews had in mind? Is that really what he was thinking of, that alone we're going to win the race? Because if you just read the rest of the chapter, you're going to discover some things that we're in this race together. Come on, just tell your neighbor, we're in this thing together. And I'll tell you, I don't want to make it all the way to heaven and have my brother or sister not make it. Come on, somebody. I don't want to reach the summit without my brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's why the author to Hebrews said this. He said in Hebrews, Hebrews 12 and verse 12, he said, Therefore, strengthen the hands that hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather healed and pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord looking carefully lest anyone falls short of the grace of God. And so what we learn from this verse is that we're to look for the, the hands that are that are slipping, the hands that need strength. And it's not talking about our hands. It's talking about someone else's hands. And, and, and I love what Tommy said when he made that decision. He said this. He said, I've got to go into full-on support mode. I love that, don't you? I'm going in the full-on support load. And there's sometimes in your life when that's going to be your calling, my friend, as a believer. Sometimes we've got to go into full-on support mode. And it may be that nobody, you know, in the world is going to recognize that until you get to heaven. But I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is going to recognize that. Come on. You say, why would we do that? I'll tell you why. So your brother can make the climb. Come on. So your sister's going to make it. When you kneel down and when you pray and when you call on God, you're strengthening their feeble hands. You're helping their weak knees. Come on. So that they can make the climb. So that they can make the journey. So when you stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, He will say something like this to you. Did you see that victory that they got? Did you see how they just came across the finish line? You were a part of that. Come on. Is there anybody that says, I'm willing to come back down the mountain. I'm willing to take my brother by the hand. Wait as long as necessary. Come to full on support mode. Amen. So that that brother can make it there. How many of you want to see him reach the top? Or should we quit right here? No, let's see him reach the top. All right. 
Okay. And let me just say this today before we watch this clip. I believe in celebrate recovery. I believe in it because there's brothers and sisters that are there. They're waiting and they're ready to go into full-on support mode. And that's a beautiful thing. Wow, they were rejoicing. Amen? But let me tell you, the rejoicing that day on the top of the dawn wall is going to be nothing in compared to the day. Come on. When the King of Kings returns or when we stand together, amen, think of the rejoicing at the pearly gates. Come on. We won't need to shake any kind of bottle either. We'll have so much joy of the Lord. We'll be so happy. We'll be so full. We'll be so filled. You want to know why? Because we made the climb. We completed the course. We finished our race. We made it to the top and we conquered pitch 15, whatever that was. Come on. And we came through victorious. Come on. Can we give our Lord a big hand of praise today? Would you stand with me today? Thank